setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And this is Michael Lodge. Surprise, surprise. So what is the conversation going to be about today? With this podcast, I should say, because I've done... I think this is my third podcast I've done today. So our conversation today is going to be about conversations with money managers. And what people told them to do to save money in their life. I'll be right back. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Welcome back. I don't know where you're at, but here in Palm Beach, Florida, it really is a beautiful day out. Looking outside out my window at the moment, and it's blue skies, little puffy clouds. Now that could change at any moment because in, in South Florida, we can get these rain clouds that come in and it dumps a bunch of buckets of water on us. So we're always prepared. I was reading a very good article this morning. Uh, you know, I get up at 5 a.m. because that's when my dogs wake me up. And I begin reading at that time. And one of the things that I read was an article by Kenneth Kisnowski. That's a hard word to pronounce. Thank God I I think I got it pretty good. I'm really bad at names. I'm probably one of the worst persons at names. <clears throat> Excuse me, but he wrote a, a, an article, and he went out and he interviewed a whole bunch of money managers, people who advise people on financial matters, and he published what people taught them, what their mentors told them to do, what their fathers and mothers told them to do on their financial situations, how to grow their money. How to save their money. Now, I think one of the things that I have really gotten pissed off lately is we've got these people on the, all the social media internet sites trying to sell you on a product on, product on how to get rich. They want you to put their mo- your money into their project. However, you have no say in how your money is going to be used. You can't withdraw your money. You can't get out of the program. But they give you a good sales pitch flying around in their jets and their planes and wearing their bling and and the list goes on. I'm getting tired of that. Because to really plan for your future, and that's what you need to do early on. If you're a millennial, I, I read an article this morning that said millennials will probably be the richest people in all the millenniums. <laughs> I don't know how, but the, probably because they're still living with their parents and saving money. Money that's why, that's why they're 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 going to be rich. But I was amazed at at what these money managers came back with and what people taught them. One principle in a in a uh, money management company, someone told them: push yourself to save at your four hundred one k until it's uncomfortable. The, 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 this advice was not fun in my 20s. However, it's, great, it's a great lesson on how to live on less early on in your career, in his career. It's a good point because how many of us are overspending? We bring in 7000 a month, but we're spending 8000 and 9000 And those extra bucks are being put on credit cards. 
You could have been putting that money into your 401k plan, into your retirement account, building that nest egg up so that when you do retire, you have that. You guys have got to cut back on your spending. Another principal said, the best advice I ever received is that pessimists, pessimists I mean, will always sound more intelligent, but optimists will be wealthier. I have to tell you, he's right on that. He is absolutely right. The other uh, comments were, bring your own lunch to work rather than eating out every day. You know, I've, I've tried that, and it does work. If you were to look, if you guys had budgets, and if you were to listen to me and put a budget together, and see how much you are spending on your lunches every single day, eating out, you could have been putting that money away into your retirement plan, into an investment, or giving it away to a charity. We spend so much money. I'm amazed when I had when my firm was large in Los Angeles. We had several employees, and we we had over 3,500 clients, uh, tax and accounting clients. We were a good sized firm for Los Angeles. But our lunches eating out were thousands and thousands of dollars a year. We wasted money when we could have been putting that money into retirement plans, health care plans, something else. <clears throat> we really do as a human race. We waste. We waste so much of our money. Bring your own lunch to work rather than eating out every day. That's... It might be sound like a childish advice, but it's a genuine, true advice. It's worked. I've done it. Believe me. Another CEO said, Let the power of positive compounding magically grow your wealth. You can just follow the math. Because the power of compounding, the equation is real easy. You need to save as much as you can, as early as you can. You cannot delay. Yes, if you make a lot, it's easier to save a lot. But every, but people at every income level need to save as much as they can as early as they can. It's simple. It's my, the easy, easy message to him and one that he preaches to every kid, no, you don't have a lot of money, but start a Roth IRA just put a hundred dollars in and see what happens. I think I told you the other day that when I was young, <clears throat> our school had a savings plan, and we had this banker that came in every single week, and we would save up our allowance to make a deposit. She would take our deposits every week, and pretty soon I had it up over a hundred dollars because I saved all my allowances, put it in there. See, it's the simple things that can make you rich, that can help you prepare for later on in life. Don't get hooked into these schemes of people wanting to, you to invest into their real estate things. It just <clears throat> it works out for them because they make a lot of money off of it. But for you, you you're just not going to save it. And probably you have the mentality that if they do pay you out, you have the tendency of spending more. You're buying those blings because now you think you're really making something. But you're not. You're just spending it. And if you're putting it on credit cards, you're even worse because now you're paying the 17, 18, 19% interest. And maybe your yearly fee is to keep that credit card going. Another company executive said, diversify. Early in his investment career, a mentor explained that a concentration of bets may help create wealth. But diversification is the prudent way to preserve wealth and avoid financial calamity. Through the years, he only got some high-risk stocks in industries like biotech blow up, but also watched blue-chip stocks. So his, his thing is diversify your money. 
put it in some real estate, put it in some investment funds, diversify. And the best way to do that is by listening or observing what the market is doing before you really jump in. Look, study it, study it out. Another president and CEO said, I was working at Wachovia Bank. This was back in the 80s and didn't know very much about Warren Buffett at that point. It was suggested that he read some of his annual letters. After doing so, I went to one of the Berkshire Hathaway annual meetings and I've now been to probably seven or eight of them over the years. The principle Buffett applies to investing is very similar to what he does at his company. So I'd say that the best advice I ever got was to listen to Warren Buffett, I guess. It is good to listen to people who have the experience, long-term experience, who have made it through the ups and downs of the economy. Watch and listen, study what they are doing. Don't go with these fly-by-night things and say, invest in this thing and that thing. Because you have to know what has been their long-term investment strategy. If it's worked for them, maybe it will work for you. I always say, you know, steal from other people. (laughs) Steal their ideas and see what's working from them so that you can apply it to your investment strategy or your real estate strategy or your budgeting strategy or your saving strategy. Whatever is working for them, apply it to you. There are so many different things that you can do. And one of them is studying every single day and monitoring what your finances are doing every single day. Don't take the risk of investing into something that you know nothing about. Make sure you have studied it forwards and backwards, upside down, inside out. Make sure you're comfortable with it. Know the industry that you're investing into. Before you put any money into that real estate, make sure you've studied it up and down. Look at the tax consequences. Look at the depreciation rates. Look at how you can turn that property around. Look at the tax implications of the investment that you're going to do if it's real estate. Look at the long and short-term gains and losses and how you're going to apply them. Hire individuals that know what they're doing. There's always, I always tell people when you're starting a business, there's two most important people that you hire. That's your accountant and your attorney. Because those are the two individuals that are going to give you the advice on the aspects of what you need on, on accounting and taxation and legal issues. They do the same application of Hiring the right people that are going to advise you on your finances and on your taxes. On your investments, on your real estate. Those individuals who have a long-term success rate. Not the individual who's only been in business for two or three years. That doesn't cut it. Find someone and study them who has had a success rate over a period of time, who has built something, who has managed managed something, who has dealt with the everyday aspects of running that, that business or that investment fund or that real estate organization. Do your studying. I told you at the beginning of this, I get up at 5 a.m. every morning because my dogs wake me up. And that's the time when I study. I want to know what's happening out there in the market. I want to know what's happening in real estate. I want to know what's happening in taxation. I want to know what what states are doing in the various 
locales it's going to affect me or my clients. I study on management. I study on marketing. I study on podcasting, what I'm doing now. I listen to podcasts that tell me how to do better podcasting. Podcasting is something that I learned on my own. I studied it and studied it and studied it. And to this day, now I've been doing it for three years, and would it's been a very good experience. I have reached and talked to a lot of different people. And I have been able to reach out to other people who have the advice, that, the knowledge that I need to get from them. So the most important thing of today's talk is, make sure you do the things that are going to help you long term. If you're going to go after the fast money, you're not going to have it for very long. You'll lose it very quickly. But if you look on focus on the long term, you will do very, very well. Do something. I gave a lecture the other day. I said, do something. If you, if you want to change your life, do something. If you want to uh, control your finances, do something. If you want to be on budget, do something. If you want to build a business, do something. But you have to do something. And that's the most important thing. If you want to get your financial system under control, and if you want to look at your long-term plan for when you do retire, you have to do something about it. And you need to surround yourself with the people that are going to get you there. If you want to do your budgeting, hire someone like me where we can come in and we can budget you and we can get you on track and we can tell you which direction that you need to go. We can work with you. Not against you. And if you are married, if you have a spouse, if you have a significant other that you've dedicated your life to, you need to dedicate your financial future also to your husband or wife or spouse. That's it for today. This is my last podcast, my last episode for October of 2019. Now we move on to November. So that means November and December, you have the ability to do something. You have the ability to make some changes. You have the ability to budget yourself out. You have the ability to make some investments. You have the ability to plan out your financial future. You have November and December to sit down with your tax advisors, with your financial advisors, your retirement people, and start planning stuff out. But you have to do something. Don't just listen to the sound of my voice, but you actually have to do something. That is what life is about, doing something. So sit down with your significant other, your spouse, your husband, your wife, and start thinking about what are we going to do to have a better 2020, to be be able to have a financially sound 2020. But it has to do with you actually doing something. Okay, everybody go out and have a, a brand new November, everyone, this is Halloween. Be safe out there. Be with your children. Enjoy the time that you spend with them. It goes by very quickly, I'm telling you. I'll talk with you very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs.
This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.